Hi, um, this is Sang Yun Park from Sung Kyung Kwan University. Before I start, I would like to firstly thank Professor Kang and Professor Shakur and other committee members for inviting me to this talk. The title of my presentation is One Pot Synthesis of Two Dimensional Heterostructures. This is the contents of my presentation. I'll briefly introduce my research interest and introduce you about two-dimensional materials before I present my research on the CVD synthesis of 2D TMTC materials, which include um, synthesizing high-quality and large-scale TMTC monolayers and their heterostructures using our unique CVD synthesis method. Before I start, I'll briefly introduce you about my research at um, SKKU. My research focuses on developing electronics and optoelectronics based on two-dimensional semiconductors such as um, molybdenum disulfide and tungsten disulfide. To realize various semiconductor devices, first thing to do is to synthesize high-quality um, single crystal 2D layers so that their fundamental properties and um, device performance are reliable. So we grow 2D semiconducting materials using um, our CVD method and we design and synthesize heterostructures and um, hybrid structures. Here the goal is to synthesize large area and high quality 2D crystals. Using the um, synthesized 2D crystals, we investigate um, various fundamental properties of 2D crystals by understanding the effect of strain, um, doping, defect, um, and also we um, study charge transport and light matter interaction mechanisms so that we can design um, noble um, semiconductor devices such as um, photodetectors, transistors, memory devices, and utilizing them into um, various flexible, transparent, and wearable platforms for um, next generation devices. We also um, broaden their applications by employing um, the 2D crystals in um, energy conversion and storage devices. So what I will be presenting today is about the synthesis part here. Um, I will show how we manipulated um, precursors, um, supersaturation levels, and um, thermodynamics in order to synthesize large size 2D crystals um, and their heterostructures. From here, I'll briefly introduce about uh, 2D semiconductors. 2D materials have attracted significant attention ever since the um, exfoliation of single layer of graphene in 2004 at University of Manchester. Graphene has outstanding electrical, thermal, and mechanical properties, yet they do not have a band gap, um, meaning that they are not suitable as a channel material for transistors and uh, phototransistors. In this regard, um, researchers then try to find other 2D materials such as um, uh, like this TMDC materials that has um, proper band gap. So what rose their interest was this group of materials called transition metal dichaconides, which is called TMDCs. Um, these TMDC materials are layered um, materials meaning that each layers are bonded with um, weak van der Waals forces here. Um, and transition metals and tricolon atoms are bonded by um, strong, um, strong covalent bond. These materials have suitable band gap. And what is interesting is that when these materials are in their bulk form, they have indirect band gap of 1.3. But when they are thin to a uh, monolayer form, they, uh, it, uh, it has um, direct band gap. These materials are nanometer thick, transparent, highly flexible, and a pro has a proper band gap. So these are suitable for future flexible 
semiconductor channel materials for electronics and optoelectronic devices. MOS2 is one of most studied among the TMDC materials, not only because they are easy to synthesize using CVD approach, but also they have good electrical and optical and mechanical properties that attract many researchers. Transistor made of 2D MOS2 um, show n-type transport, high mobility, and high on-off ratio, showing typical well-defined um, semiconductor channel. But what is unique about 2D materials is that because they are so thin, the short channel effects are reduced in these, in these devices. So they are suitable for scaling down devices and realizing nanoscale devices. Also, um, photo detectors made of these 2D TMDCs show extremely high uh, photoresponsivity and quantum efficiencies. This is because of the photo gating effects um, um, from defect, ambient defect, which are quite dominant for, for the 2D materials. Besides electronics and optoelectronic devices, 2D TMDCs are also widely studied as an electrode materials in batteries and catalysts. One unique, about, one unique thing about 2D materials is that they're ideally dangling bone free meaning that they can be easily attached by uh, weak van der Waals forces and create clean and atomically sharp interface in 2D heterostructures. As you can see in the Lego image, van der Waals materials can be easily attached or detached using transfer and alignment processes. So using various van der Waals materials and using their um, fundamental band gaps and transport properties, one can design various heterojunctions and devices with varying device performances. Also, recently, as you can see in the bottom image, um, right image here, um, 2D motors can stack with different stacking angles to show that at a certain stacking angle, interesting properties such as superconductivity or um, unique interlayer or um, hybridized excitons can be found. These 2D materials are highly suitable for future flexible devices because firstly, they have good um, field effect mobilities um, and as the channel thickness is reduced, they have greater flexibility, transparency, and a gate control. And as you can see in the right image here, um, the strain limit of 2D materials are far greater than the strain limit of conventional bulk semiconductors such as 3.5 semiconductors or silicon. Two D materials based devices can be fabricated using different um, 2D materials such as uh, metallic graphene, insulating HBN and semiconducting MOS2, or using fabrication methods such as um, inkjet printing. 2D materials can be integrated onto various flexible devices. Um, these days, electronic devices need to be bendable, foldable, or even rollable. And such properties are also required for various wearable devices. Using 2D materials and their ability to be flexible and transparent, they are highly suitable for various future flexible and wearable devices. From here, I'll discuss our CVD method for realizing large size TMDC monolayers and their heterostructures. Um, these are various methods for synthesizing high-quality 2D TMDC monolayers. The early stage of research on 2D materials relied on the exfoliation method here, on the left, for producing single layer of TMDCs. Um, there are two types. One is um, mechanical exfoliation using uh, a tape. 
So it's folate from um, from the bulk crystals. The exfoliated crystals are high quality, but usually the exfoliation leads to very small size crystals, and it is um, hard to exfoliate um, the monolayered crystals. Liquid phase is an, another method of exfoliation. Um, here, powders are either exfoliated using ultrasonication or ion intercalation inside a liquid. It is a faster mo method, however, the method can damage um, the crystals or lead to small size crystals. Um, CVD method, chemical vapor uh, deposition method, is the most widely used method to synthesize single crystals and wafer scale continuous film. In most laboratories, um, solid precursors such as um, molybdenum oxide and sulfur powders, so molybdenum oxide is generally put here and sulfur is put upstream, um, are used. Um, using this approach, triangular single crystals can be synthesized and generally um, high quality uh, uh, 2D crystals can be synthesized due to the high synthesis temperature. Um, metal organic gas precursors can be also used to synthesize continuous and wafer scale thin film of 2D TMDCs. Mm, uh, other methods such as um, atomic layer deposition and molecular beam epitaxy can be also used to synthesize continuous film. However, they are relatively difficult in synthesizing continuous 2D TMDCs film. CVD growth of um, MOS2 is generally based on the reaction of uh, molybdenum oxide and sulfur powders in a vapor phase. Popular CVD growth mechanism is that um, molybdenum oxide and sulfur react in, uh, in the vapor phase and induce um, supersaturation state around the uh, substrate and nucleate on the substrate. Or the uh, volatile MOO3 minus X or MOOS gaseous species absorb to the substrate and convert to um, MOS2 by meeting with sulfur. Um, using this um, CVD synthesis method, um, at a limited growth time or at a limited amount of precursors, single crystals um, can be grown. And if the growth time or the amount of precursors increases, then continuous film can be grown with grain boundaries. And also using different um, transition metal oxides um, and uh, various heterostructures can be synthesized. Um, the goal of the CVD synthesis, synthesis is to synthesize high quality single crystal TMDC monolayers for various high performance electronic um, and optoelectronic devices. In the early stage of research of the, uh, of the CVD synthesis, most of the CVD setup was based on placing sulfur powders in the upstream and um, MOO3 powders in the downstream. And the silicon oxide substrate is placed face down on the boat containing the MOO3 powders. Generally, um, this um, molten oxide precursors amount in the range of 5 to 100 milligrams um, or even higher was loaded on uh, in this boat. In this setup, um, central part um, of the substrate um, here, where the uh, molybdenum oxide concentration is the maximum, bulk layer of MOS2 and a messy um, MO3 bulk is, are both grown here. Um, 
on the substrate. Um, on the other hand, um, in the edges here, in the edges um, of the substrate, where the bot and the substrate is touching, um, MOO3 concentration is the lowest in the single crystals of MOS2 is grown. Also, depend on the position of the substrate um, relative to the position of MOO3 precursors, shape can be also different due to the different flux of molybdenum oxide gaseous precursors within the position of the boat. So what we then thought is that maybe if we reduce the amount of metal oxide precursors, we might get MOS2 single crystals over the entire SiO2 substrate. So, um, in order to reduce the amount of metal oxide precursors, we found that a solution-based precursor preparation can be useful in precisely loading the MOO3 powders. Um, in, this, in this approach, we can load very little amount below 0.01 mg of uh, MOO3, while when we load powders, the lowest amount we can load is um, around um, point around is in the range of few few milligrams. So what we did is that we dissolved this um, MO3 powders in ammonium hydroxide solution, as can be seen in this um, picture. The clear bottle shows that MO3 powders are fully dissolved in um, ammonium hydroxide solution. We then either coat um, onto the substrate or directly load small amount of the uh, metal oxide in the boat. In this way, we could precise, precisely load the um, MO3. For our synthesis, in order to increase the um, diffusivity of the precursors and maximize the crystal size, um, growth time was raised to 800 degrees Celsius. Which is, which is a little bit higher than previous reports. This can be done because we are using a very small amount of the precursors and the extremely small amount of precursors result in um, inducing very, very low supersaturation level near the substrate, which then leads to low nucleation density on the surface of SL2. So here is what we achieved. Um, when we load very small amount of precursors, regardless of the growth time, because all the MOO3 is consumed. Um, because supersaturation level and the nucleation density is very low, the growth of um, monolayer film was carried with little disturbance from the neighboring crystals. So this is the center, and this is the left edge and the right edge. And the corresponding crystals are seen here. Um, as you can see, on the center of the substrate, a um, very clean monolayer film is grown. And on the edges of the substrate, single crystal size up to 500 microns was grown. Also, when you check the quality of the sample, the quality was um, very good. As you can see in the very sharp PL peak, and the high quality atomic arrangement of, in the TEM images. So um, we then investigated the effect of the supersaturation level of the MOS2 monolayer growth by controlling the amount of precursors from 0.01 milligram to 1 milligram. As you can see in the pictures, um, nucleation density increases when the amount of precursors increases. But the crystal size is maximized when the amount of precursors is um, around 0.01 mg. From this result, we can clearly distinguish two dominant growth regimes. One is um, this um, regime with thermodynamically stable reaction, and another regime is um, kinetic reaction. 
In a thermodynamically favored process, um, reactive atoms have enough time to diffuse to energetically favorable locations, leading to the formation of stable and high crystalline structure. Um, in a kinetic controlled regime, uh, reaction and nucleation is very fast, so it is not easy for atoms to diffuse to the energetically favorable sites. So the size is um, very small while the nucleation density is increased. Using the same proposed strategy, we also synthesized WS2 crystals. Here, WO3 was also dissolved in the ammonium hydroxide solution, and we achieved crystal size um, up to um, 360 micrometers and very sharp uh, sharp PL peaks indicating that synthesized WS2 monolayer is a very high quality crystal. Um, using our synthesis protocol, we can simply synthesize very high quality TMDC heterostructures. Um, the strategy is simple. We just load very small amount of um, MO3 precursors with um, WO3 precursors together in the furnace. Uh, and an important parameter is that is when we vaporize the um, sulfur precursors and the supersaturation level of the metal oxide precursors. Because we use very small amount of um, molybdenum oxide precursors and because there is difference in the um, melting temperature of these precursors, we can fully consume um, MOO3 first um, and WS2 grow later on. As you can see in the picture, we synthesize um, um, very large 2D heterostructures up to um, 160 micrometers that has very sharp um, interface. Here I sh will show the benefits of our synthetic method by comparing one, the one-step synthesis with um, two-step synthesis method. Here, um, one-step um, synthesis means that um, means um, synthesizing the heterostructure at once, and two-step is synthesizing the MOS2 first and taking the sample out and load it again for synthesizing the shell layer. When the sample is taken out, it is exposed to um, ambient um, conditions, and which and this condition can induce some of um, um, defect near the interface between MOS2 and WS2. And during the second growth step of WS2, the growth kinetics can be changed and defect size can be the nucleation size for the WS2 growth. Then during the second growth step, alloy can be formed um, due to um, defect-induced diffusion, as can be seen in the picture. On the other hand, um, one-step synthesis is much more favorable in creating very sharp interface because the edges are not exposed during the second growth of WS2. Usually, when both precursors are loaded, it is very difficult to synthesize heterostructure with sharp interface. But because we use very small amount of um, MO3 precursors, our one-step method is better than the two-step method. So we characterize the one-step um, synthesized 2D heterostructures using Raman and PL and TEM measurements. From the mapping image and the TM image, the MOS2 core and WS2 shell layer are clearly distinguished. We also made a device using these um, heterostructure crystals. Um, the device shows rectifying behaviors, which agree with the formation of the junction. Our growth strategy can grow various 2D lateral heterostructures including MOS2, WS2, shown in type A, 
MOS2 in the core, allow in the shell, shown in type B, um, allow in the core, and DWS2 in the shell, shown in type C, and, or just simply allow it monolayers um, shown in type D. This can be all controlled by changing the growth temperature and the temperature in which sulfur is melt. Also, um, supersaturation level can induce a load structure in the core or uh, in the shell. Uh, not just this, um, composition ratio can be also controlled in the alloyed region. The composition can be simply controlled by adjusting the supersaturation level of um, WS W3 and MO3. So here is a nice image and characterization of the alloyed heterostructure. As you can see in the MOS2 alloy here, um, the mapping image shows that the core is MOS2 and the shell is alloy. Um, likewise, the mapping image in the bottom shows that the um, core is the alloy and the shell is WS2. We also synthesize alloyed monolayers just simply introducing um, sulfur very late and we control the composition ratio by controlling the relative amount of each metal oxide precursors. As you can see in the image, um, um, Raman and PL picks um, the alloyed monolayer is um, very uniform over the entire triangular crystals. And the PL peak in the bottom right figure here show that we can um, control the composition ratio um, by, um, by changing the relative amount of the supersaturation levels. So to sum up, um, 2D TMDCs are semiconductors with proper band gap and very thin, transparent, and flexible. So they are suitable for future flexible electronic and optoelectronic devices. For this, it is very important to synthesize large size and high quality 2D crystals. Also, to make various junctions, it is important to be able to synthesize TMDC heterostructures. To do so, we employed solution process precursor method to control um, the amount of precursors so that low supersaturation state and nucleation density is achieved, which results in um, high crystalline and large size crystals. Using this approach, we also synthesize various heterostructures, including MOS2, WS2, MOS2 alloy, alloy WS2, and alloy monolayers. This is achieved through controlling the amount of precursors and changing the growth temperature as well as the um, sulfur melting temperature uh, time. Thank you for listening.